What's up, everyone? Today, I'm going to talk about a fun way to approach phrasing. So as drummers, we typically approach things rhythmically, which makes sense given the nature of what we do. But we could also think melodically, and we should think melodically. And when I say melodically, I'm not necessarily referring to absolute pitches or playing in a specific key signature or anything like that. I mean just more general melodic shapes and contours. Are we playing with a sort of ascending vibe? Are the pitches going up? Or a descending vibe? Are they going down? And we have the tools to create those general melodic shapes. And I think of different parts of the drum set as occupying different pitch ranges. So for my higher pitches, I think of my snare drum or my hi-hats or the bell of the ride cymbal. For mid-range pitches, we got rack toms that we can use. And for lower range pitches, I'm thinking my bass drum and floor tom. Generally, if we're moving in a clockwise direction, we're creating a descending melody since the pitches start in the higher range and gradually work toward the lower range. And if we're moving in a counterclockwise direction around the drums, I think of that as ascending motion, since we are starting at a lower pitch and working toward a higher pitch. I like creating melodies with my right hand, and then I like to use my left hand as texture. So I'll usually just have my left hand play ghost notes, maybe an occasional accent in there. Uh, but for the most part, I think of it like expansion foam. It's just kind of there to sop up some of the space, and it really behaves more as a texture than something that contributes rhythmic or melodic content. We could also use the bass drum as a melodic component, but a lot of times I find myself using the kick as a way to offset the melody in a beat or as another way to fill in little gaps if my left hand just can't quite do it all alone. So to get into a firmer demonstration of what I'm talking about here, we're gonna start with a sort of ascending melody where my right hand is gonna begin on the floor tom and work toward the small tom. And we don't yet have to think of specific rhythmic rates. That piece will fall into place momentarily. I'm just thinking floor tom, mid tom, small tom. That's gonna be my melody. Using my left hand on the snare drum to play ghost notes, I can fine tune the spacing between each of the notes in the melody. I'll start by thinking in triplets. So my right hand is gonna play quarter notes, floor tom, mid tom, high tom, and the left hand is going to fill in the second and third spaces of each beat. So that feels pretty square and stable since the melodic content is just happening directly on each beat. So now I'm going to use the bass drum to offset the melody a little. And instead of just keeping it right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left, left, now I'll have more of a displaced quarter note triplet rhythm happening on my right hand. Rhythmically, it's going to have this offset triplet feel. Since the first little phrase I demonstrated was three beats long, just right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left, left, let's modify this second chunk so it also takes three beats. That little offset triplet thing on its own comes around every two beats, so to fill the third beat, I'm just going to do left, left, kick. So two ghost notes and a kick. So the second chunk on its own sounds like this. All right, so now we have two little phrase pieces that each occupy three beats. If we're thinking in 4-4, four, four, since 4-4 four, four is pretty standard, the two pieces we have take a total of six beats. So if we wanted to stay in four and just fill two measures, or eight beats, we need to fill two more beats. So we could take this general melodic shape, which we've been phrasing in triplets, and kind of squish it into two beats of 16th notes. The sticking I'll use for this two beat 16th note chunk is right, left, right, left, left, right, left, left, where the right hand is still just going floor tom, mid tom, high tom still keeping the same general melody, but ever so slightly altering the spacing. That third little chunk on its own sounds like this.
the next step is to put that whole phrase together. So we have the two three-beat triplet combinations and then the two-beat 16th note pattern at the end. All together, we have right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left, left, which was the first chunk, and then kick, right, left, right, left, right, left, left, kick, which is the second three-beat chunk, and then finally right, left, right, left, left, right, left, left as 16th notes. I think that's a pretty cool phrase. It's got some direction to it since rhythmically it starts a little more spacious and then it compresses. It gives this impression that like momentum is building, we're going somewhere. However, all of that was just moving in an ascending direction. We can just as easily flip our direction around to have a descending version of the same combination. Now the melody just consists of my right hand going from small tom to mid tom to floor tom using the same rhythmic framework that we just worked through. Since we have three defined chunks that make up this entire phrase, maybe we scramble the melodic contour a bit. Instead of just going in only one direction, what if we went descending for the first chunk, ascending in the second chunk, and then descending again in the third chunk?
and I would encourage you to explore all of the different directions. You could use the snare drum instead of only the toms. Maybe you're on only a four-piece kit, so you could use your snare drum, small tom, and floor tom for the melodic components. But you just got to try out some different combinations to find out what sounds good and feels good to you. And then real quick, I'll throw you a bonus chop. This one is going to be built around hertas. So just right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, which I think of as a three beat pattern. Since it's a three beat pattern, it fits quite nicely into a single beat of triplets. So we'll play just hertas clockwise around the drums for four beats. And then in a second measure, we'll switch into 16th notes. Now, when we compress a herta into a 16th note rhythmic rate, it's only going to occupy the value of a dotted eighth note, or three quarters of a beat. So we'll be able to play five hertas in one measure of 16th notes, but then we're going to have one extra space left over. So we're going to play the bass drum directly on beat one, and then starting on the E of beat one, we're going to kick into our hertas. And we're just going to fly around the drums. It's going to be really cool, and it's going to sound like this. Try building your own melodies and see what kind of cool combinations you can come up with. I have a lot of fun improvising with this general concept, and I find that it's very helpful in not thinking so hard about specific stickings. If you like what you saw in this video, check out my Patreon page. Your support grants you access to transcriptions for this video, as well as transcriptions for all my other lesson videos. And follow me on Instagram, at DrummerHar, to see more videos of my playing. As always, thanks for watching, and see you next time.